Hello, everybody. Welcome to AP Physics today. We're continuing our discussion on momentum and impulse and the conservation of momentum. So if we look at this problem right here, we can see the before and after pictures. So if you look at this, it says uh, collisions. OK. Here's the problem. An 8 kilogram mass moving east at 15 meters per second strikes a 10 kilogram mass that is at rest. So there is only x momentum to start out, right? So there can only be x momentum in the end. So the inquisitive, unexperienced physics students might say, well, that doesn't look right because look, I actually have momentum in something other than an x direction, and momentum in something in a, in a x direction. And the more experienced physics student answers with, well, that is because momentum is a vector. So, what does that mean? Because we see that we definitely have a y momentum in that ball. What does that mean for the other ball? We have the same y momentum in magnitude, but opposite in direction. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Okay, so when we add these two momentums together, they become zero which still then follows this conservation momentum. And so in the end, these two together still have only, as a group, an x momentum that was equal to this momentum in the beginning. Any questions about that? Keeping in mind, Never is there a conservation of kinetic energy in any collision unless it's labeled elastic. Okay? So every collision is inelastic unless it's labeled elastic. Which they claim only truly happens on the atomic level or molecular level, which some claim it doesn't even happen. But it's negligible, the loss. If it doesn't. Okay, so let's look at how do we how do we um, split this up? Okay, so P sub naught equals P. And if you look in the notes, you can see that uh, we can say P sub naught x equals P x, and P sub naught y equals P y. There's a little typo there. You might want to change that typo. Okay. So, you have to split this up and put it back together. But, by looking at this right now, what can you tell me about the PY1 and the PY2? So, we'll label PY1 um, and PY2, which since there's no sub naught, that means it's the final momentum, right? What do we know about those? They're equal. So, the first thing we would want to do then in our little math, we'd, we'd say PY1 equals PY2. And then we can start putting in some numbers. Okay, so if we go back to our problem, we can say, do we have any angles at all here given? Uh, well, in this case, we don't, but we have theta and beta, right? Theta and beta. So how do you describe PY2? Well, if this is P2, so this would be P2, right? How would you describe P2? I meant to say, how would you, subs or how would you describe PY2? You could call this if you wanted to, you could call this sine beta P2. That's a good description. Okay? 
And you could even put a direction here on that time. That's kind of something that might come in handy. I'm going to just say that it's in that direction right now. Okay. And then we need to call this one then sine theta P2. And that direction is, is there. Okay, so we may or may not use that, but at least I have a label for this stuff if, if I need to. And in this problem, I don't think there's actually a, a problem with this up here. This is just kind of describing what's going on. Sage. Okay, I've got a number of mistakes I'd like to clarify here. First of all, we're not actually doing this problem yet. Um, we're just looking at the general setup. And instead of this being P2, that would be sine theta P1. Okay, so if we were going to look at our you know, little thing, we would say that uh, sine theta P1 equals sine beta P2. And if you're wondering how that math gets us to that point, is we know that those are equal to zero, right? And so we would, we would really have like this zero equals sine theta P1 plus sine beta P2. But then when you put the, the uh, opposite direction in there, you know, so one of these, once, once we kind of work the numbers, one of these would be negative, right? And so when you do the algebra, then you just get this situation here for a formula. Does that make sense? Okay. So when you see things vectorially that are equal to each other on the opposite sides of the sign, or I guess that's not the way they'd be equal to each other, then it's got to say, hey, that's in the opposite direction. Okay, so if we go back to the, if we go back to this, what else do we know? Well, we know that if this was P1 here, or if this was ball 1, then we could say that P1 is equal to, what would P1 be equal to? Yeah, so this would be P1 sub naught. Okay, just to clear up the screen a little bit here. P1 sub naught is all x, right? P1 sub naught is all x. And we had already defined the y variables, or the y pieces of the second. They cancel each other out. Well, the question is, where is this? Because P1 sub naught is all x momentum. Where is it? Well, part of it is here, and the other part is here. So if we would label these two, they would be, you know, cosine theta um, P1, and this would be cosine theta P1. And they're both in the positive direction. So if we would look at our next formula then, we could say P1 sub naught is equal to cosine um, beta P1 plus cosine theta. Oh, I have those mixed up. P2 plus cosine theta P1. Okay, so now we have we have these uh, three equations that we can use, and then it just becomes the substitution problem. But you got to be careful that you know what your directions are. So another way to label this is like if you get an answer, you could you know put a subscript plus x or minus x, subscript plus y or minus y. So let's see if we can actually do this. Next problem, that's set. Okay, so here's the challenge problem. Go ahead and give it a try. Okay, so what do you do here? Well, you, you remember the under 
or the overarching I principle is P sub naught equals P. Completely conserved. Our initial P is, so it's this, one of them sitting still and one of them isn't, we only have one initial P and it's all X, right? So you could go, you know, P sub naught X and then, you know, if you need to make a checklist for later, you could go P sub naught Y and that could kind of help you keep your things in order, right? In this case, we don't have it, the Y, but we do have the X. So P sub naught X is wrapped up all in this one ball. So it's going to be the mass, which is 8 times 15. Our P sub naught X, which is actually our P, in this case, is going to be then uh, 120 kilogram meters per second. And I'm just going to put... I'm going to put that there so I don't forget that's what I have. It's just positive X stuff. You could put positive X as a label too. I like arrows. Okay, so when you come back over here, you see, hey, what, is, what, what, what do I have here? That has nothing to do with X. Right? So whatever is in here has to be canceled out by something else. Because in the beginning, we had no X at all. So how do we cancel out this X? Well, it has to be wrapped up in this. I mean, how do we cancel out this Y? It has to be canceled out by whatever that Y momentum is. So then you would say, well, geez, I, my um, PY stuff, well, I know that here I have 4 meters per second, and that ball has a mass of 8, right? So I've got 8 times 4, so I have a 32 kilogram meters per second, and that's downward. So by default, then, I know that this right here has to be equal to 32 kilogram meters per second because that's the only way you can cancel it out, right? So you could do a couple different things here. Like you could change this now into a velocity and then do the same thing with this and just use a velocity triangle. Or you could keep it in momentum until you find out your actual momentum here, which is what I'm going to do. So I know I have 32 for a momentum in that direction. What do I have here? That momentum is, is the whole X from the, from the other one, because that's there's nowhere else for it to be. So that's going to be 120. Okay, so... My final momentum would be then for, uh, you know, the second ball would be equal to the square root of 120 squared plus 32 squared, okay? And that momentum is... One twenty four point one nine. Okay. Now I might as well put an angle on that right now too because the momentum angle comes from the velocity. And if I ask for velocity, you know I'm asking for direction, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, you know the theta is gonna be an uh, inverse tangent of 32 over 120, which the theta then equals 14.93. I'm going to put above positive x, okay? Which it would be, you know, north of east, right? Okay, so this holds true for velocity and momentum. So I'm done with my angle. So how do I find my velocity then? Well, you know, 
Very So the velocity then becomes our momentum here divided by the mass, which in this case is 10. Okay, so our velocity is 12.419 meters per second at 14.93 above the positive x or north of east. Do you have any questions about that? Okay, here's another kind of classical physics problem, the bullet shot into the block. Um, and the reason why this one is so good is because kids try to conserve kinetic energy. But if you shoot a bullet into a block, is the block going to heat up? Yes. Are you going to hear it? Yes. There's no conservation of kinetic energy unless you're told it's an elastic collision. So the question usually is, what is the theta? And actually, the real question is, how fast is the bullet going? But we're going to do it this way first. And I had, a, you know, Chad Boger and his lab partner did this with the arrow for their Create Your Own Lab on this years ago. And they got, like, right in there for the percentage error that they said the bull had online. So this stuff works. So keeping in mind P sub naught equals P. In this case, our P sub naught is just the bullet. So it's 0 0.02 for our mass, times 400, that equals P. So in the end, the uh, momentum is 8 kilogram meters per second. Okay? But what happens here is the bullet gets lodged in, and then the whole thing moves with this momentum. Okay? So, the question is, how far does it move? How far does the block move? Well, the first thing that you have to do is figure out the velocity of this perfectly inelastic collision. It's coupled like, uh, uh, you know, train. So, we set this equal to then uh, the new mass, which in this case is going to be 2 kilograms plus the 0.2 kilograms that the bullet mass has. And we have to figure out our new velocity in that case. So the velocity of the combination then becomes 3.96 meters per second. Okay, so now what do you do next to figure out this? Okay, so we know that this is kinetic energy, right? There's a kinetic there. And we know that whatever that kinetic is, is going to be translated into a change in potential energy due to gravity. Do you agree? So, what we'll do then is uh, just, you know, go one half mv squared equals mgh, cancel, cancel, v, or h, equals um, v squared divided by 2g, h in this case then equals 3.96 squared divided by 20. The height then is 0 0.784. 0 0.784 meters. Any questions about that? Okay, so after that point then, you can figure out, well, I guess that was the question, right? How high did it go? Oh, theta. Okay, so we know that this here is 0.784, um, and 
And I guess that's all the further we can go without knowing the length of the pedal. So we can't actually find theta. But I suppose we could in terms of theta, right? Because um, the uh, cosine theta then is adjacent over hypotenuse. Theta is inverse cosine times, and the adjacent here would be L, the length of the pendulum, minus 0.784, and that'd be over L. And that should be our theta. Okay, hopefully this helps you with your homework. Have a good weekend.